Let's talk about matrices. Um, uh, this is like the plural of the word matrix, all right? This has absolutely nothing to do with Neo or, you know, agents. Uh, Mr. Anderson. What? Yeah, it's, it's, it's the matrices trilogy. Uh, the matrices, what we're going to do is we're going to take a system and we're going to rewrite it using a matrix. Now, a matrix would be something using this kind of notation. Um, we just have numbers <coughs> in here like this, say like 3, 5, 9, you know, 2, 1, negative 4. This is an example of a, of a matrix. I've seen this before. Okay. Um, now, no commas to separate these? Or no, you, you space them out well enough so they're not right up against each other. So what you have here is that you've got your rows, and then of course you have your columns, right? So what we have described here is a, what we call a two by three matrix. You got two rows, and you have three columns in each row. Okay. Now, matrices will allow you to do a lot of neat things, and one of those things is to <coughs> take, bless you, systems of equations that we've had before and rewrite them. Um, for example, if I were to take let me take this guy right here. X plus 5Y equals 3. And 2X minus 3Y equals negative 20. I can rewrite this guy to be in a matrix. Now all you have to do is see this great thing about a matrix is it just looks at the coefficients. You don't need to worry about X, Y, or even if sometimes there's a Z that shows up. Well, no, you do. You do. Because if I were to go and make this a matrix, then one column has to be just for your x's, one column is for your y's, and the last column is where your constant is. Okay? Because it's a way of, of ordering your information in a way that's useful to us. So, my coefficient for this x is 1, I've got a positive 5 for the y, and my constant is 3. So we'll I know they have to match, like, you know, the top yeah. number and the bottom, but would it matter if it's, like, by the next and constant? You really need to make sure it's in this order. That way your audience understands what you're doing. Okay. What doesn't matter in terms of the order will be the order for the columns. See, it doesn't matter if I'd given you this equation first or this one first. It would still be the same system, right? I'd still be looking at where these two lines intersect. So when I look at it in terms of a matrix, it doesn't matter if I have this first and then this or this and then that. It doesn't matter. Now, notice what we did in systems before is that I can multiply one whole row times a number, right? I can do the same thing here. And there's a lot of other things that we can do, but I want to show you the quick and easy way for working this. Draw a little dashed line right here. Okay. Now, through matrix operations, your goal is to take <coughs> something that looks like this and you transform it using uh, multiplication and addition with rows, and you want it to become this. One, zero, zero, one. And then the A and B are just going to be numbers. Because if you can do that, if you can do operations to get to here, what this tells you is that X is equal to A and Y is equal to B. Now, let me show you how you would go about doing that for this particular example, so you can see that how, how we go about you know, doing these things. It may be kind of crazy, but just, <coughs> just have to trust me on this, okay? So let me start with this guy right here. I'm just going to rewrite him for you. Now, for doing small systems of equations, the steps I'm going to show you may seem like overkill when you already know how to do addition, elimination, or the substitution method. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to understand that this guy is, this is row one and that's row two. Is that cool? You guys with me on that? Now, since my goal is to end up with this guy right here, and this piece right here, the one, zero, zero, one, is called the identity matrix. 
where you have just one X and just one Y, your goal is to get here. And there, and the method is as follows. If you've got a one here, you're already starting off well. You want to get zeros underneath that. No matter how big the matrix is, you want to get zeros all the way down. Now for me to get a zero here, here's what I'm going to do. I want to multiply negative two times row one, and we're going to add it to row two. Just watch, watch, this is fun. If I do negative two times this, what do I get? And I add it here, what do you get? So that becomes zero. If I do negative two times this, what do you get? Negative 10 added to negative three is what? Do the same thing here. What's negative two times three added to this? Negative two times this is negative six. Added here is negative 26. I've got a one, I've got a zero underneath it, right? Now think back what you're trying to get to. You want to get to there to be a zero and a one here. So how do you think I could go about getting this to be a one? What do you think? How could you take this row right here? Just pretend you don't even have anything else. How could you get this number to be a one? I can't just add 14 to each number. That's not something I can do. Well, I can multiply. You said how to get the one, so quantify. You got to get the one by adding 14. How else can you do it? Divide. Okay, well, let me ask you this. Divide seeing by seeing how 30. this is a coefficient for y, and this is a constant, th if you saw this for negative 13y equals negative 26, would you still tell me you get one y here by adding 14? No. How would you do it? Divide you divide by negative 13. So what I can do here, is that you can take row two and divide it by negative 13, and you've got to put that back in place of row two. So that top row, you didn't even touch the top row. But what does that bottom row become now? Zero, what? One. And what? You have to divide everything two. by negative 13, you get two. So the, the way this operation works is you, you get a one here, and you get the one down at the bottom. So you work your way down, but now you gotta go back up because you need to have a zero here. It says you have to have a zero. How could you go from having a one here, how could you use this row to make this five become a zero? What do you think you would do? Multiply, Multiply negative five times row two, and add it to row one, and you're gonna stick that in row one. What happens if I multiply zero times negative five? Zero. So if I add that zero to the one, does that ever change the one? So the one that you have already established gets to stay a one, it doesn't have to change. Zero, one. So negative five times this guy, zero, added there is still a one. What's negative five times one added to five? Zero. What's negative five times two added to three? Negative seven. What does this one stand for? This means that I have one x, zero y, and this equals negative seven. I have zero y, actually zero x, and one y, that equals two. So what do you think that means for my solution? It's negative seven two. Okay. Now, this is just one example working through doing this. Um, you, things can get a lot more complicated, but that's not what's important. I just want you to see the kind of the thought process of going through here, and I want you to see what you can do with the graphing calculator. Okay. Say again? You said we didn't like it. I said I don't like that. There are a lot of different things you can do with matrices that will help you solve systems very easily. But 
we don't really have time to get into a lot of that stuff. Maybe I'll make some videos of that for you. <coughs> Here's what I want you to do. Go to your matrix. So you see this X negative 1? If you press second matrix, go and edit. Okay. If you go under here where it has names, that's going to input that matrix in the last screen where you were. Like if you're going to do operations with that, but I don't want to do that. I want to edit. Now, yours probably says zero by zero, so you would just type in, I if there's a way to, hold on a second. One by one. Yeah. Oh, yeah, one by one, not zero by zero. Two by three. So let me, so this is what you guys see. You see one by one, and it's got zero in there. That's Th there's nothing, okay? So you want to do a two by three. Just type in two, hit enter, type in three, and hit enter. And all you do is you type in those coefficients. So what's my coefficient here? One, five, three. And then it goes down to the next row, and you do the same thing. Two, negative three, negative 20. So I have my matrix entered into the computer, into the calculator, right? Mm -hmm. Now I want you to quit. Go back to your main screen. What you want to do is to take that matrix that we saw, if I, if I were to put this in the main screen and hit enter, I get that exact matrix. You with me? But I don't want this matrix because this matrix itself does not tell me the answers. I want to take this matrix and I want it to become. That's not what I. You said that just go back to quit and hit enter and you get it on your screen? No. I. If you go back to second matrix and you repress A right oh, here, okay. you can bring that up. But I want it to get in this form, right? So we're going to do some matrix operations here. And the calculator will do everything for you. Check this out. Go under matrix and go under math. DET is called the determinant, which is useful to us, but not right now. If you go down here, you see REF and RREF. You want to do this one, which stands for reduced row echelon form. Okay. If I hit this guy, notice how it opens parentheses and it's expecting something, right? R ref or ref? R ref. R -ref. <coughs> so I want to put my matrix there. So if I go back to second matrix, I call up the names, not the edit, but the names. And I hit enter, so it puts it where I want it to be. And it's going to tell the calculator to take this A matrix that I have right here and put it in reduced row echelon form, which is what you see right here. And it tells me, basically, x is negative 7 and y is 2. Mm, well, let me look at that in, in just a moment. I want to go back and look at something that we've done, and then I'll answer your question. Um, we already did a vid video. Let's see, where was it? Look at this guy right here. The 7x plus 2y equals 16. I want you to put this as a matrix and then do the reduced row echelon form. So go back to second matrix. I need to edit. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> what happens when we do have a cup of water. 2 by 3 is great. I'm just typing my coefficient 7, 2, 16, 4, 5, negative 14. Does everybody have that matrix typed in? No. Okay. Now I'm going to quit out of this. Now the last thing I typed in was the reduced row echelon form of A, right? And if I do second entry, my A is now changed, right? So it should do with the new matrix that I typed in. What do you expect it to look like? Remember, this was my, this was my answer. I expect it to look like 1, 0, 4, and 0, 1, negative 6. X is 4, Y is negative 6. 